Hey, welcome to Dan's Mod Works, and we're here in the big workshop. And look, I got one of these fancy cutting mats like the like the real modeling channels have. So I've been working on making parts that we're going to need for making our chassis. And of course, here is one of the differentials. And this is probably going to be the one I use for the rear. And then... I went and I used the same mold for the front one. Now this has to be sanded down and glued together. But what I'm going to do is I know that obviously this is incorrect for passing the drive shaft through to the rear one. But I'm probably going to put a um, oh probably a, a piece of evergreen styrene. Uh, straw in there and then I'm going to build it up with some putty to basically represent the way it should be. Once again, I know it won't be 100% correct, but I'm going to go by pictures and that sort of thing. I just didn't really want to make a second mold of the other type of differential. Uh, speaking of parts, one of the most difficult things to cast is the front axle. And as you can see this one here, there's a giant air bubble right there. So that one is garbage. And then this one here, the whole end didn't cast properly. So that one's garbage. And then finally, this one here seems to be pretty good. So um, there's a couple small flaws, but I think otherwise it's the way we want it to be. I got off lucky with the front leaf springs. They both pretty much cast well the first time around. So they're okay. And this is one of the rear suspensions. And this actually was the second try for this one. And it turned out pretty good. And I just poured this one. I'm not quite sure why it foamed up so much. But at any rate, it still has a little bit of hardening to do. Um, yeah, it's almost as thick as... I think probably my resin is just about toast. The bottles are almost empty and probably the chemicals are starting to go off a little bit. So hopefully this one ends up coming out well because I basically cast this one twice and the second one was all right. And this is the third try for this side. Okay, this was a pretty good one except this little part here I actually ended up cracking as I took it out. But I think I should be able to glue it in place, and it should be fine. I can probably put a very small reinforcing plate at the back of it. Um, this one is still a little soft. Like I said, I think my resin has just about had it. If I, You can see I don't have much left here. I mean, it's, it's only like to there. And the inside of the bottle is getting kind of crispy, so you know it's been setting up on the inside. So... I don't think I'm going to get too many more parts out of this. I mean, there's not even that much volume left anyway. So while I'm waiting for my TIE Fighters to dry, these are actually the, the rear axles that have been glued together with super glue, and I'll be putting some, um, some putty in there. Finally started work on the side frames. As you can see, they are awfully thick, but we wanted them fairly thick so they would be robust. And these are the top and bottom of the side frames. So you can see they're not going to stick out that much, but all we're looking for is to give the illusion that it's a, it's still a, a C channel. All right, we've got a mad scatter of plastic here. I've gone and I've... Um, I've done some filling on my seams here so that we don't have giant cracks in our, in our pumpkins. This is the rearmost axle and this one here is the front one. And you can see that we now have a spot for the second drive shaft to come out of. And that was just based on looking at the uh, the one that came in the snowplow kit. Now, the one in the snowplow kit had another reduction gear here at the front. I just went without that. Uh, the way I created this was just basically I put a piece of evergreen uh, tubing 
on here. And then I just built it up with some putty to represent how it would be cast. So that was how that was done. And we have some frame members here. Now, remember I said it was going to be way thicker than realistic? Well, it is. You can see that. The, uh, the upper and lower parts are about the same thickness of most truck kit frames, but this is probably about twice as thick. But once again, unless we're looking end on and we're never going to see it because we're going to have a bumper on the front and on the back, not quite sure where I flipped this around, we're going to have the tow truck body. So we're only ever going to be able to see this kind of edge on. So uh, the gray is a little bit of putty because I, you know, just where I glued those on, it wasn't absolutely perfect. So I wanted to clean that up a bit. Then we have, this is our rear main cross member and it goes over the bit where the rear suspensions mount. And then we have, this one is our rearmost cross member. And then we have, this is going to be our front just under the radiator. And then this one's going to be a little ways behind the cab. I haven't done anything to make the cab support cross member or the engine support cross member. I'm going to do that a little bit later once I've got a better idea what's going on with those components. So that is all of our main cross members in place. We've got this one, which actually um, is going to be more of a radiator support um, at the front. And then this one, which actually doesn't correspond to one in the snowplow kit, but added in any way for strength. And we've got the main one that goes where the drive axles are going to be. And then we've got the lighter duty one here at the back. Now, from comments I've gotten on the actual Dodge tow truck video, at least two people have said who have some firsthand knowledge of the truck have said that the... The truck that they used, they basically went over the frame because they tore it all apart and rebuilt it, and they replated the frame. They basically added extra reinforcement to the frame. So the real truck didn't have a standard Dodge truck frame on it anyway. It had something beefed up. So who's to say that they didn't have a couple of extra cross members that things added? But at any rate, the, the main reason we're building this so tough is resin is heavy. This is... Yeah, it's probably about half a pound, maybe. Now, maybe a third of a pound. But it's still a big, heavy thing to be putting on here. There's still an interior. Then, of course, we've got all the wheels going to be hanging off the back. That's all going to be resin. So we want something that's going to be fairly rigid. And the glue is still setting up, but there's not a whole lot of twist in this. And I used my cutting mat to make sure everything was nice and square. So... There we go. So you can see it's sitting on here nice and flat. So I'm going to let that set up overnight. And I think we've got a, a good start, good foundation to what we need to be doing here. So it's been about 12 hours and I've given the frame quite a bit of time to set up. And you can see I can, I can put a fair amount of force into it to get it to flex, but it's certainly not by any stretch of the imagination flimsy. Like, I mean, here it's pretty rigid. That's pretty rigid. A little bit of inward flex right here, but we will be installing the bottom 10% of an engine in this space, and that will take up some of that flex. So I don't think really we're going to end up with a frame that's any more rigid than this. I'm going to start hanging springs and suspension bits on it now. Mere seconds for you, but it's been a couple days for me. I've got the suspension glued on. You can see I've added a rod going between here, and that is a part that would be on the real suspension. It basically helps to stabilize the geometry of it. Um, I'm probably going to be putting a little bit of uh, filler up here and there just to complete where my castings, you know, were a little incomplete because of, you know, the molding technology that I'm using. So I'm going to be tidying that up. 
and the front suspension as you can see I've got a I've got some little blocks on here and the main reason for that is if we compare to the snowplow frame where it actually uh, gets a little thinner over the rear suspension that ends up making a bit of a difference so and the other thing I'm probably going to be doing is I'm probably going to be touching up the detail on my spring hangers here at the front um, there is a little bit of a toe out in my springs I think probably on the C series frame where I copied these springs from there was probably a little molding or something that these things kind of hung on to I'm not going to worry about that toe out because it doesn't really affect anything when it's sitting on those on its wheels and everything like that nobody's going to be able to see that they're at a bit of a toe in angle unless they pick it up turn it around and 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 look at it I'm not super super worried about that I'm sure somebody is and they'll be in the comments and so but the reason these little blocks are here is because of that difference in in the width of the frame and I figured it was probably going to be more difficult to uh, tweak my frame so that it was thinner at the back than at the front so that's that's what that's for So now you can see I've glued the rear axles in place and yes this looks wrong because it's not all there yet. In fact the axles are, there's a shackle which goes from, I don't know if this is called the walking beam or, or what it is, but basically this, this equalizing beam here allows that when one axle is shoved up the other axle comes down in order to kind of equalize the movement. At any rate, these are held on to the ends of this by, I don't know what it's called, a shackle, but there's it's basically a, um, a heavy plate that attaches here, and then it goes, the, the axle passes through it. If you have the Ford uh, Louisville kit by AMT, and that's what these parts are copied from, you'll see those in the kit. Let's see if I can find one. So here is the parts from the actual Ford Louisville kit and you can see that the axle actually has these um, I don't know set of ears whatever that come down and they engage with the equalization beam right here. So that's what still has to be modeled on ours is that these still need to be put on. So as you can see here they're not they're not yet present. I know this one's going this way and mine's going the other way. But that still needs to be added. And as I mentioned in one of the previous takes, I'm going to be using a little bit of putty to recreate some of the details that were lost in my crude casting technology here. So there's still a lot more work to be done on the frame. If I wait until I've got all of that done before posting this video, it's going to be another week or two. So I know people have been looking for an update on this project, so I'm going to pretty much uh, call it quits on this video for this episode. And um, hopefully it won't be another month before we have an update. Hopefully it's going to be more like uh, a week back on the Sabre Dog and then back to this in another week. It's just because of the Father's Day project and some of the other stuff that was going on that caused a big delay between these two videos, you know, part one and part two. So, as usual, it's my normal apology. I'm sorry I'm not independently wealthy and can spend all day doing this sort of stuff. Um, thanks for watching, and until next time, just keep on modeling.